Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. Freedomsphoenix.com So just want to provide a recap. I'm out here in Cape Town in this uh, workout area, this outside workout area. It's probably close to midnight. Um, came over here, I saw some blue lights. I decided to film them. This police vehicle drove up the street, made a U-turn, came back down the street. And, you know, based on the interactions Jacob and I have had thus far on the ground, I didn't know if they maybe even saw me filming or were going to come harass me, but they turned uh, when the road teed, continued on, stopped about a block later, stopped an individual walking, who I later learned his name was Edward. And as he told us, you know, he was just walking and they essentially just asked him what he was doing and demanded that they be able to search him. After the two highwaymen left Edward B., I approached him on foot. I showed Edward the video that I had taken and told him, you know, hey, I, I wanted to take this to create an objective record in case something, you know, even worse would have happened, in case it would have started beating you or something like that. He seemed very appreciative, and so I asked him if he'd be willing to sit down and have a conversation about it. Uh, my name is Edward Mitchell. Uh, I'm here from South Africa. I'm, I'm staying here on the streets of Sea Point since I was seven years old. Now I'm, I'm turning uh, the 4th of December, I'm turning 26 years old. I used to snuff glue, I used to rob people, I used to be in an informer trees, prison, out of prison again, in a, like just police, everywhere, everywhere we go, they stopped us, they searched us for nothing. They don't search the people who do crime, but the innocent people, they always get stopped in the main roads, get searched, if you don't do your cooperation, uh, they will beat you, and most of the police, they are the, big, the biggest criminals here in South Africa because why they smuggle with the criminals here. But with the drug houses, they know the people what the drug dens and what, but they leave the people drugs like that. But if the people give them money, they are fine. They are connected with the criminals. You understand what I'm saying? Like the the firearms and stuff, all the illegal stuff, they sell it to the people, to the criminals, to the gangsters. It's all about money. While showing Edward that footage, the, the same police vehicle with the same two police employees that had just shooken him down a few minutes prior drove by and it slowed down as it passed us and uh, approached the curb and I thought they might stop and come at us, but you know, after hesitating momentarily, they continued on. You know, as I told him, there's no victim, there's no crime, and if he's sleeping on property that nobody owns per se, except the public, and he's a member of the public, I see no issue with that. You know, and I definitely do see an issue with two strangers approaching him on the street and shaking him down. You know, and, and he did like, I pointed out the back of this hoodie, badges don't grant extra right. He seemed to uh, really resonate with him. So I'm gonna continue my work on hopefully no other uh, road pirates show up. And uh, actually right now I see a police van, but uh, they're driving on right now. Another road pirate. In light of witnessing the experience that Edward was subjected to, uh, it reminded me that earlier today, when Jacob and I were walking back to the, our crash spot, uh, we were just buying some groceries, we saw uh, across the street from where Edward had just been shaken down, we saw two police employees talking to another individual. And, you know, we filmed from across the street. We weren't exactly sure why that person had been stopped, but, you know, it leads me to believe now with the knowledge that Edward shared that perhaps that person was uh, also stopped and frisked. Some people might try to support this practice of stop and frisk. But think about it, if you give a group of people the right to stop and shake down somebody else based on their appearance or for any other arbitrary reason, what kind of precedent does that set? If you would admit that it's wrong for me or you to stop some random person do that, yet you think somebody else wearing a piece of tin on their costume has that right, you establish a double standard. And once that double standard is established, it makes even worse transgressions of rights uh, much more probable. It's definitely not the kind of practice that helps bring about a free society.